So tonight we have a, a, a treat. We have a, a woman of God who wants to give a testimony. So if you guys would praise God for her to bring up. Uh, she wants to give her a testimony. I'm sorry, sis. What was your name? Hi, guys. I'm actually com uh, covering a company logo, so don't think I'm trying to have you say the pledge right now. But I was here for the uh, gifts seminar. I think it was last month in April. And I actually brought a friend with me that was struggling with some stuff. And she was getting delivered. And it was getting late because Mike ran long with that one, but it was good. And uh, towards the end, I was like, well, I'll go. And she's like, no, no, go get yours. Go get your deliverance. So I came up here, and I was like, okay. So some little things are coming out. You know, had these minor things shaken off. And as I go to walk away, Brother Mike grabs me. And he's like, you're not done. And that's the first time he's actually interacted with me. It was kind of intimidating. And uh, I was like, okay, I guess I'm not. So then Karina comes over, and Karina's like, all right, let's work on this. And she's going through it with me. And, you know, one of the questions most common is, do you have unforgiveness or ought? And I'm like, girl, no, I'm not a, new, a newbie at this. I'm already, like, taking care of on that. I already, like, figured all that out. And I was like, but I had a little bit of ought. I already took care of it, though. I cried a little, let it go towards a, a broken family situation that I have. And she's like, okay, and I tell her a little bit more. And she's like, well, let's get that spirit of Jezebel out. And as soon as she got that out of her mouth, I started wailing this, like, unheard of wail to where I'm looking at Karina like, that ain't me. And she's, like, just coming against it. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's not me. And I'm like, praise God, but I don't know what's going on. It's flowing out of me. It's coming from the pit of my gut. It's like this I can't even describe feeling. But what Karina didn't know is because during that time of her discernment of being able to help me to do that deliverance and, you know, God being there and making all that happen in that presence, it was setting me up to be able to come back together with my family, which I've been like Jonah on the run from. Uh, and God's been trying to tell me, like, spread my word there. You need to go back to them. And I'm like, oh, I, think, I don't think I can. You don't understand. It's so hard. You know, me telling God, I, you don't understand. But sure enough, after that deliverance from that ought, I was able to. And I spent Easter with my family. I spent some holidays with them and some family get-togethers with them, and I am spreading the word there. And there's, like, no hard feelings about it. I feel great. So thank you. Praise God. Great place. Testing, one, two, three. Hey, good evening. Deliverance Centerites, welcome to uh, the service tonight. We've got a very odd Bible study all prepared for you tonight. And you're going to enjoy it very much. Assuming the audio keeps working. Praise God. That was a nice testimony. What was unusual about that testimony was kind of the emotional, physical activities that go along with deliverance. And what she was describing there really is what caused churches to throw deliverance out. And what she was saying there is what people don't like. They don't like it. And so the devil came up with a new process of healing where they've got all these inner healers running around the country. A bunch of them here in Phoenix. And they've, <clears throat> they're have they trying to figure out a method of deliverance that is nice and calm and sweet and quiet. So that it's just nice and smooth. They did the same thing with salvation. They kind of watered the message down and made it real easy to get saved. So anybody want to get saved? I do. Okay, say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, please free my sins. Receive your Lord and Savior. Lord, you're gone. Say you're saved. See, and that's what the church does. They try to make everything easy, sweet, nice, pleasant. Happy. That's what church people like. Happy, sweet, nice, and pleasant. That's why not too many people come here. We don't have any church programs here. And we're not anti-Christ. We're anti-church. We love the people in the church, but we don't have any churchy programs. Because if you make it too nice and too sweet, that limits the Spirit of the Lord. And then people are not really being helped. So then after they're not helped in your ministry, you've got to talk them into the fact they're helped. you got to talk them into it. See? So you've got to come up with a bunch of fabricated doctrines like word of faith crap. 
No, just keep repeating it over and over. So you talk yourself into it. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. There you go, you believe. That's good. And they don't believe. Everything in Christianity is not just simple, easy, and sweet and nice. And there's nothing that can be done about it. Unless you want to do it like the church does and just make it water it down and then it becomes ineffective and it doesn't work right and the people aren't really being helped and church is not fun if you do it right all the time there's some tough tough things in church some people don't want to receive truth some people don't even want to hear it so that puts me in a bad spot i got to get right on the face That's why they call me lucky. <laughs> and you got to get these people to listen. And if they don't listen, they're not going to get healed. So I got to push them sometimes. You know? It's just like raising kids. Anybody here got kids? Nobody? Okay. Well, I have kids, and when they're little, Sometimes they don't do what you tell them when you just casually talk to them. Hey, please pick that up, sweetheart. Well, sometimes they don't pick it up. Well, some people don't listen to truth. You know, I had a couple of counseling sessions this week, and I'm yelling at the people in my office. I'm literally yelling at them, trying to get some kind of truth into their spirit. Why am I yelling at them? Because I hate them opposite. I care about them. So I'm yelling at these people whom the demons have blocked receiving truth. And it's very similar to a racquetball game. Bang, boom. I hit them with a bag of truth. Boom, it bounces off their forehead. It doesn't go in. Boom, bang. Boom. And pretty soon, seven or eight balls later, 10 or 12 later, one of them gets in. And then you don't have to yell at them anymore. And they go from being a spiritual idiot to a man or a woman of God. But everything's not nice and sweet. It doesn't work like that. Okay, let's, this is a real world here. This isn't church. Church is a fantasy world of hopes and dreams and wishes. This is a real world here. Some people are sick here. What am I talking about that for? How to get off on that? Let's get back to this uh, right here. I got lost on another subject. I don't know what happened to me. I never do know what happens to me. I really don't. Where am I now? Oh, but announcements. All right. That's a normal announcement. And here's another announcement. Every day I'm on the radio, Monday through Monday. I'm on the weekends now on 10, 10 a.m. And I am also on uh, the Internet 100% of the time, all day, every day. You can click there on the website and go to the radio stations. I'm also on the internet radio on Sunday nights now. This is my new ministry. I started here last Sunday. Sunday, uh, The first show had 147 listeners. So the Bible says don't despise small beginnings. I'm happy with 147. I ain't got no problem with that. I don't mind starting out small. I'm used to starting low and little and, you know, work your way up. You got to start at the bottom uh, because that's the best place to learn. That's the way life is. If you want to help the ministry out, you can uh, donate money to us free. Just switch over from Google to Good Search, put in Hardcore Christianity. And if you buy anything off Amazon, you can do the same thing for us. We get 1.2% of your sales. It's almost like a religious tax. <laughs> and <laughs> you buy something for $100, uh, we get, anybody know math here? We get a dollar twenty. Was that Robert? That's what I thought. <laughs> we get a dollar twenty out of it. I did. The Lord just dropped me a word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So if you put in hardcore Christianity, you can help us out, and uh, you can also help by donating on the website. God bless you. I will be in Alabama this month. I'll see you there. I will not be in Casa Grande. Uh, that thing canceled. My guess is. The pastor of the church probably looked at my website, filled his, <laughs> filled his depends, 
Went to the bathroom to change, came back, and canceled the service. Normally happens to me. All right, now let's go to the Bible study. Let's have some fun tonight. Jehovah is an interesting person. Oh, that's an understatement. And if you look through the Old Testament, you're seeing someone who has, a, my goodness, a wide range of emotions. Jehovah did. And one of his emotions was furious anger. Gosh, he got mad. I mean, mad, mad. Madder than we've ever been. I used to have anger spirits. And uh, it comes from uh, different marriages. That, that, we'll, we'll go into that later. That's at the other seminar. But anyway, I used to have anger spirits. I have never been as mad as Yahweh. Never. I have never been as mad as God. I mean, not even close have I been that mad. Never. I'll prove it to you. First Samuel chapter 6. God told uh, King David, hey, go get the Ark of the Lord. King David says, absolutely. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. He goes and gets the Ark of the Lord. He brings it back. The oxen are taking the thing over some rough ground, right? It's not I-10 freeway. And guess what? This thing starts to rock back and forth, and the Ark of the Lord starts to fall off the trailer. And a good guy, Uzzah, reaches out and stops this thing because he didn't want the thing to fall on the ground and break or whatever it was. Whatever reason he did it, he was I'm sure it was out of probably out of uh, a good heart. He was trying to help, so to speak. And guess what happened? Guess what happened? Boom! The anger of God flared up in an instant. When I mean, you talk about a hot temper, bang! I mean, in an eighth of a second, this poor guy is dead. I have never been that mad. I've been close to it. I give you their names, but what's the point? <laughs> He's dead in an instant. Well, King David freaked when that happened. He freaked after that. He, oh my God! Never saw anybody get so mad so quick. But we're not done. Psalm seventy-four. Oh God, why have you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pastor? Pastor, what's he talking about? Jews. God's chosen people matter than a hornet at them for their sin and their idolatry. I mean, furious. Jeremiah chapter 7, thus says the Lord, Behold, my anger and my fury shall be poured out in this place upon man and beast and trees, fruits of the ground, you name it. you, you got to be pretty mad to start ruining trees. I mean, that's, that's fury. Get mad at trees because trees really aren't doing anything. Trees don't do anything. I don't think they know. I don't think they know who you are. I can't prove that. Don't send me an email. But in my opinion, only I don't think plants know who you are. I don't think they have emotions like we do. I don't think they think. I don't think, man, I'll tell you what, you ever been married to somebody that. Loses their temper and sees something that's throwable and then goes for it and then throws it. Nobody has. Um, Yahweh is so mad. He's so angry. He's so furious. He's killing animals and trees. Now that's plenty mad, sir. That's madder than I've ever been. I've never, never killed a tree. Never. <laughs> I haven't. I don't even think I've had a thought of killing a tree. Now, I have had some trees I tried to plant and get them to grow, and they didn't grow, and they were kind of dying, so I just kind of snuck over to the wastebasket and got rid of them. That's more like a slow execution. But I wasn't doing it in anger. I was doing it because I don't have a green thumb. God is killing fruit of the ground. He's so mad. He can't even see straight. Why? These Jews are driving him crazy. They keep going into idolatry and sinning. He's furious about it. 
Ezekiel chapter 13 thus says the Lord God I will rend it with a stormy wind in my fury now God is so mad he's so angry he's using the weather to blow stuff around that's how mad he is now that's pretty mad that's plenty mad and there shall be an overflowing shower of my anger says the Lord great hailstones in my fury this is somebody who's got a temper. I mean, this person gets angry. And he's not just kind of like a regular person who gets angry and can't do anything about it. He can kill trees, bees, fruit, tornadoes, lightning. I mean, that's mad. God's mad. Furious anger. We're not playing around here. Check this one out, Jeremiah 42. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, my anger and my fury is poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Now he's coming after the Jews who live in Jerusalem. He's so mad. So shall my fury be poured out upon you when you enter into Egypt. Wow, these, some of these Jews wanted to go back to Egypt. That just, he was steaming when he got that one. Steaming mad. Raging mad. I'll tell you what, Jehovah's, Jehovah does have him a temper. If you push his buttons, man, he, he was getting angry. You will be an excreation. What is that, an Allah? What is an Allah? That's a curse word. You ever heard that? You ever heard an Allah? You hear it all the time in a rap video. MF is an Allah. In a gangster rap, so and so is an MF and a this, or they call them biatches in a rap video. That's an X creation. That is, that is a person that sucks so bad, they don't even have a name anymore. They are a curse word. Jehovah said, you don't, You're not even going to be a human anymore. You're going to be a curse word. I'm so mad at you. That's how mad I am. Wow, that's terrible. And an astonishment. What? And a curse. And a reproach. And you will never see this place again. I mean, that's somebody who is furious. We're talking about, we're not talking about somebody that's getting angry here. We're talking about somebody who's blowing their stack. Genesis 38. It came to pass when Anon went into his brother's wife what was he doing in there well any kids here tonight okay they're having intercourse and Yahweh's commission to the Jews was what be fruitful and multiply well her husband died and so Jehovah said listen if this guy dies the brother comes in and keeps the family going right so he goes in, he's having intercourse, he pulls out, and ejaculates on the ground. In an instant, in an instant, boom, Jehovah freaks, freaks out, and kills him. I'll tell you what, that'll cut down your love life. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, the old boy that wraps it up there. Number 16, the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up. Korah starts criticizing Moses. He doesn't like the way he's running the show. That happens to me a lot. People come to me and say, you know, you're not doing the deliverance center right here. You know, why do you turn them lights off? Why are you yelling at the people? Why did you grab that one more? I get all kinds of criticisms. Well, I don't get anything near Moses again. They were tearing him to shreds. They had a bunch of families that ganged up together and said, hey, you know what? We're, we can start our own group. We're like Moses, and Moses is a screw-up. And so, hey, no problem. Let's replace the dude. Well, Jehovah comes down. He says, hey, have everybody come out tomorrow. Stand over here. You stand over there. I'll settle this for you. Okay? Nobody knows he's furious. All of a sudden, this isn't even a joke. 
the earth opens up boom, all the way down to the center of the earth where hell is and their whole family all the families fall down this massive cavern into the bowels of hell alive I thought the Red Sea was a big miracle. The Red Sea was mouse and mick compared to this miracle. You split the planet Earth open all the way down to hell. You know how deep the center of the Earth is, for God's sakes? That's a hike. Huh, what were they doing? A bunch of pedophiles running around? No. They were criticizing the man that God put in charge of that group, they didn't go to him and say, hey, your guy's screwing up. You want us to replace him? There wasn't any of that. They did it on their own. And Jehovah got so mad and so furious. you got to be mad to dig a hole to hell to throw somebody in it. Now that's anger. Yes, sir. How does Yahweh get that man? He was never married. I don't get it, but listen <laughs> We're talking about anger here. That's inconceivable No human can compare to Jehovah the Hebrew God when it comes to anger. It's not happening. It's not possible. Trust me Look, I'm just reading the scriptures don't get mad at me Numbers 12 the anger of the Lord was kindled against him and he departed and the cloud departed off the tabernacle Well it happened again it wasn't Korah anymore. They were burning in hell already. Moses got stabbed in the back by his own family and his own inner circle. That's happened to me before. People you know you, people you trust, they're out there stabbing you in the back. Happens all the time. No problemo. It's a problem in this group. Big problem here. His sister stabbing him in the back. And she was a prophet. Her bro his brother stabbed him in the back. He was the high priest of Israel, the top guy. They said, we don't like Moses. You know why? He, he married an Ethiopian. They were racist. See, America used to be racist. <laughs> that was my joke. No, seriously, back in the 50s, if you married, you had interracial marriage, people were like, God Almighty, that's a massive social stigma. You, you married a Chinaman? What are you, nuts? You married a black? But, what? God, people were appalled. Nowadays, it's, it's no big deal. There's nothing, there's nothing to it now. But back then, they had it. Moses fell in love with this Hot looking babe from Ethiopia. Yeah, that's right. I'm not an expert on Ethiopian girls, but this gal had to have been a knockout. Yeah, I bet you Ethiopian women are hot. Well, I'll bet you this one was smoking hot. Because Moses married her, and guess what happened? His sister, a prophet, and his brother, the high priest. The biggest man in all of Israel, number one guy, didn't like Ethiopian women. Huh. Jehovah heard about that, and uh-oh, they pushed his button. You can push people's button, but Jehovah, the Hebrew God, he's the last person on your list to push his button. That's the last person. Push that button. They pushed it. Guess what happened? Well, Jehovah didn't do anything to Aaron because he had on the high priest's robe and he was covered. He had the anointing covering, so Aaron got off of it. Miriam didn't have the robe. Bang! In an instant of fury. She start, turned into stage four leprosy right in front of them. And the cloud of glory left. Why? He got mad. I mean, mad, mad. And they took Moses a while to talk him off the ledge. 
Can we all agree? Maybe you don't. That in the Old Testament, Yahweh had a multi-layered personality for obvious, obviously, and one of those layers was extreme anger towards sin. All these incidents of anger and rage and fury were provoked. Captain, you notice that? He never did it on his own. Somebody provoked him into it. That's how mad he got. Somebody came to him and spit in his face. And when they did it, that dad did it. He blew up. Boom! That's what the Bible says. You read the Bible, and that's what it. If you don't believe me, look them verses up yourself. It's right in the Bible. I read the Bible. Guess what? The Bible's strange, isn't it? Matthew chapter 11. From the days of John the Baptist until now, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven suffers biadzo. That's a mob pressing in, people pressing in, crashing in, and the violent take it by. Harpazo, that's the Greek word for the rapture. It means to snatch or seize. Snatch it. People are pushing in to the kingdom of God and they're taking it by force. They're snatching it. They're not asking you for it. Why? I'd be doing it too. The dispensation of grace has now arrived with John the Baptist and the dispensation of law is now over. And Yahweh's massive temper came to a halt. A new season started. Yes, sir. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. What in the world happened? Luke chapter 4, Isaiah 61, it says that here, something's changing here. The Spirit of the Lord God's upon me because the Lord same Lord that blew a stack and killed and opened up hell. The Lord has, has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. And he sent me to bind the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives. Ephesians 2. Jesus has abolished in his flesh the what? Hostility. Ekphra. Ekphra is hostility. The hostility and abolish means what? Yeah, it means to wipe out or erase. See, I just wiped that line up there. See that? Now I erased it. Notice that? I catargeo, I removed it. In his body, what did he remove toward human beings? The hostility and the law of the commandments. And he took the two and made them one. Jews, Gentiles. After he made them one, he, he did what? He created a new man. And Instead of getting dropped into hell, God now brought me peace. Something's changed. Jehovah has changed here. That he might reconcile both to God through what? His body on the cross of Calvary. And the enmity, extra, the hostility that went with the law. Korah violated the law, and Jehovah blew his back right out of the skies, split the ground open, and threw those people into hell alive. It's the only time it's ever happened. That's hostility. Yeah. That's beyond marriage. That's, that's another leg of hostility. <laughs> but those people that were far off, he now brought them nigh. Come here. Okay. 
Now, wait a minute. Here's a bunch of sinners that should have been executed in the Old Testament. These guys should have been stoned or thrown into hell or something, dude. We need to get rid of these things. Publicans and sinners. Oh, boy. These rotten sinners need to be stoned and then burned in hell. Because these things, these people doing these sins really make God mad. Let's see how mad he gets here. When the Pharisees saw saw this, they said to the disciples, Why does your teacher, Didaskill, why does he, why does he uh, eat with publicans and sinners? These people are supposed to be shot, murdered, burned in hell, and then stoned. Right? When Jesus heard that, he said, Hey, wait a minute. Something's changed. Notice there's no Jehovah here blowing his stack. Notice God's not going rage on him. Notice, notice something's different here. What is it? They're the same people. These are Jews. Sinful Jews. Sinful Jews drive you nuts. They drove Jehovah flat out nuts. Wait a minute. I came to save sinners. What are you talking about? This is odd. How about career criminals? Here's some uh, pictures of crucifixions from antiquities. These are actual artifacts. They put the leg, of course, on the side of the cross, and then they pounded your leg in this way so that your feet were like that. Normally, the pictures have them like that. That's not how they did it because the ankles wouldn't go flat. They just put your legs there, the pole there, and they put your heels on either side of it. Then they knocked the spike through your ankles from the outside in. So as you're on the cross, the cross is here. From the back, coming up. That, right? And that's an actual foot with part of the, part of the spike in it. And that's what one of those spikes, Roman spikes look like. Kind of interesting. Well, I thought it was. Here's another one. That's a close-up of a deteriorated ankle bone that had that spike through it. And then they'd knock it through the wood, and then you bent it on the other side. Bend it over so the thing wouldn't fall out. And that one there has been bent. You can see the curve there. So you keep the person on the cross there so they don't fall off, because if they fell off, you know, you, you got demoted points in the Roman crucifixion system. You know, you screwed up. Hey, you got people falling off the cross. You know, you're not going to get promoted. I mean, there's an art to killing people, and you got to go through a certain skill set to develop it. Just like any other profession, you can't just run out and start killing people. You got to train for it. Stupid. In Luke chapter 23, one of the malefactors, a Kagurgos, is a criminal. A criminal. Wait a minute. Criminals, oh, that, that makes Jehovah so mad he can't see straight. All them people are going to go to hell. Boom, that's a Korah deal. Is it, a, is it now a Korah deal? Wow, what are you talking about? Now this Jew is blasphemy. Blasphemeo is blaspheming Jesus. He was blaspheming the Son of God. That did it. Now you know Jehovah is going to go freaked out crazy, right? You know he's in trouble now. The other said, hey, what are you doing? The other criminal had some common sense. He said, hey, listen, we have the same cream of judgment. We're in the same judgment of death he is. We are all hung on these crosses. Then he says, we deserve this, but he doesn't. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Wait a minute. God, Jehovah used to remember people by splitting the earth up and dropping them into hell. He would kill them instantly in fury if they touched the Ark of the Covenant. Boom, they fall over dead. Something's changed here. Wow, this criminal who should have been murdered, Jesus says to him, today you will be with me in uh, Paradisus. Something's changed here. This, this is not the normal. Nah. Something, something's wrong here. Oh, adulteries. Oh, that's it. In the Old Testament, <clears throat> you were done, man. You get caught committing adultery. Oh, brother, it was nasty. It was nasty. 
they would take you out of town and then they would dig a hole put you in it fill the hole up and then everybody in town would start throwing rocks at your head it's where the old-fashioned saying came from have you got rocks in your head they literally had rocks in their head and the person that threw the first stones was the one that was violated in the adultery so if your wife was out doing a guy the husband who was affronted he threw the first stone at the adulterers during the execution process and that was it Jehovah hated don't know he's furious about that he told him stop doing it don't do that thou shalt not commit adultery the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a gune a woman Taken in adultery, a wife. A gune is a wife. So this gal is cheating on her husband. He brings her to Jesus, right? When they set her in the midst, they said, Teacher, this woman was taken in moikia, adultery. Heterosexual sex is moikia. So you, we know she was sleeping with a male. She wasn't a lesbian. We know she was a wife, a gune. I know what you're thinking. Why do I find myself interested in these kind of details? Well, it's a good question. I'm not sure. We caught her in the very act, and it says, Moses in the law says God is steaming mad over that. And as a result of that, they are to be stoned. Period. But what do you say? Oh, something's changed now. I know something's changed now. These are actual pictures in Afghanistan of women who were accused of adultery. And back in Afghanistan, you don't have to have any proof. They just kill people off the rack there. Well, here's what they do. They bury them, and then everybody comes up and stone them so they can't run away. Because they all try and run, obviously, to get away from it. Here's two women that were executed. The Bible said in Exodus 19 and Deuteronomy 13, hey, it was a capital offense. Stone them to death. That's it. Period. God's mad in the Old Testament. And it says they were tempting him, so they might accuse him of contradicting the law of Moses. So Jesus then does what? It says he stoops down with his finger and he starts to write in the ground. No one knows what he wrote, but what I think he wrote was uh, sin that that person was doing that was standing there looking at him. Jacob, you know, thief. And he looks up at him. And then he bends over again, pedophile. Zacchaeus, he looks at it. What was the law doing? The, what it's supposed to do? Point out sin. So Jesus was using the law; they were using against this poor girl. The process was all jacked up because if they were both caught in the act, both were taken before the council, and both were taken out town and stoned together. Well, this is jacked up because now only the girls here. What exactly happened? I don't know. It doesn't say, but something's fishy. And it says when they continued asking him, they weren't asking him. Erotero means to interrogate someone. Uh huh. Now we're into the marriage. That's uh, where were you? Uh, what time was it? When did you get back? How'd you get there? When are you coming up? What are you doing? What am I doing there? Talking to a wife on the phone. <laughs> but what is she doing to me? Erotero, she's interrogating me. Uh, what's going on in Washington? They're, everybody's interrogating everybody there. See? And they're letting Jesus have it, one after the other. Boom, 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 boom. He's not saying anything. But he is saying something. This guy's interrogating him, so he writes down. And this guy's barking at him, so he writes down something about him. Well, this little process he goes through brings in the conviction of the Holy Ghost. Hey, let's do it this way. Those of you who don't have any sin, and you have it because I just wrote it out for you, why don't you throw the first stone? Hey, hey, Eleazar, the pedophile, why don't you throw the first stone? Eleazar bolts for the Kmart. Okay. 
He stoops down he writes on the ground and they which heard being convicted by their conscience Oh, what a great thing a conscience is isn't it? You ever met a Christian that doesn't have a conscience anymore? Oh, they are messed up They are messed up How does a Christian get a bad conscience two ways? They get saved and they don't go through deliverance and they don't go through repentance initially or B they backslide Something happens to the person their conscience isn't working anymore and so they're doing stuff that no born-again Christian would normally do They're committing sins that Is obviously wrong, but they don't feel it anymore They don't feel it anymore Habit may have may have dulled it Other emotions may have dulled it something's happened but if you've got a conscience and you're convicted as a Christian, man, you are a blessed person. Your future is bright. Having a conscience that works, man, you can have a ministry if you've got a conscience that works. You know what? You can be in the ministry someday. You can be trusted with the moving of the Spirit someday if you have a conscience. If you sear your conscience, you're just sinning and you don't feel anything anymore. Ooh, you're in a bad spot, real bad spot. Ask Rick. He preaches to people at the jail all the time that their consciences are seared. He's talking to them right in their face. Hey, this is a sin. That's a sin. They're not feeling anything. They're, those guys are in trouble. They're in deep trouble. If you got a conscience and you got conviction, wow, that's a moment of celebration for you. Good for you. That's a positive. What well, doesn't feel that good? Well, it doesn't matter. It's still a positive. Some things that don't feel good are good for you. And once one by one, they all left. Jesus standing there with the woman in the midst, meaning that the accusers left, but the disciples stayed. And it says when Jesus lifted up, anakupto means to unbend. He was bent over. And he unbended. He looks around. And he says, "Good day, wife. Where are your accusers?" Well, what do you mean? Where? What about Jehovah? Jehovah's madder than a hornet at me. I was in committing adultery. Wait a minute. Or is he mad at her? Wait a minute. He's not mad at her anymore. Has no man catacrino judged you and sentenced you? Crino means to judge. Catacrino means to judge and condemn and sentence them. That means to find them guilty. Guilty of murder. Boom. Sentence to. Boom. 45 years in jail. Take him away. That's the difference. Catacrino, Crino. Jesus, hey, are these people the people condemned you and sentenced you to death? Well, Jehovah sure sentenced the guy touched the ark. He sure sentenced Korah. Miriam got a load of leprosy. But wait a minute here. Is God a respecter of person? No, wait, something's changed here. Think about this here. Hmm. No man's here to judge me and condemn me and sentence me, Lord. Jesus said, neither do I judge you and condemn you and sentence you. What? Go and sin no more. Here's what's mind-boggling about this. The Old Testament, Yahweh, is now the New Testament person speaking in red ink in your Bible. They're the same person. Something's changed here. Jehovah's not the same person he was before. Something's different here. Ha! Huh. Zacchaeus, another crooked, lying, thieving Jew. Boy, Jehovah slaughtered these in droves, didn't he? Died in droves in the Old Testament. Luke chapter 19, Jesus entered Jericho. Behold, a man named Zacchaeus, the chief among the publicans. He was a... Uh, uh, a Telonis is a tax farmer, somebody who farms for money. Nowadays, we call them con artists. 
<laughs> Archelonus is a supervisor of people who farm for money. See? Yeah. This would be the Don, and these would be the mafia mafiosos, and the Don would be here. He was a Don in the mafia system. He was like one of the godfathers, so to speak, of his territory. Okay? Right? At the, you used to have the five families in New York. Each one of them had a godfather over each one of them, right? This guy was like a godfather. He wasn't a regular tax collector. No, no. He wasn't like Matthew. Matthew was down here. Zacchaeus was up here. And he was rich. He had a lot of money. And mafioso people, they're rich. They steal everybody else's money and they keep it themselves. It says he... He sought to see Jesus. Now, here's where the Christian system collapses. You notice this? Here's where Christianity in America just falls completely apart. It stinks so bad you can't even put a smell on it. Zateo means to eagerly hunt for. Eagerly search for. Yeah. Here in Christianity, people just casually roll in. Then they sit their big fat fannies on the chair. Oh, how you doing, brother? Good, brother. Sister, how you doing? Good. Let's praise the Lord. Oh, darn it, the beans. No, not Zacchaeus. He was not an American Christian. He was determined to find God. Unlike Christians here in America, they just casually roll in and expect God to fall out of the heavens, triple axle over to them. So what did he do? He was so little and short. Mikros means small. He does what? What did he do? Sure. He ran before him and climbed into a sukamore, a mulberry tree. He climbs up the tree. Yeah. Why is he doing that? Well, shorter people are usually better climbers. <laughs> you know, like poor Rick over there. Let's say you got Rick mad. Okay. He, <laughs> he's got a little bit of Jehovah in him. Yes. I don't know that personally because I don't go there. I always treat him very nice. I'd recommend you do the same. <laughs> But he's got a little Jehovah in there, and he's got a little fire. See? But if I'm trying to get away from him down the hall, my odds are not good. But if I can climb somewhere, you could get away from Rick and piss him off good. That's right, because small guys are better climbers. He's too big. Too big. So Zacky is a tiny guy. And he's up this tree like a ferret. <clears throat> when Jesus came to the place, he looks up in the mulberry tree. He sees a teeny guy up there. He said, come down. I'm eating at your house tonight. Why? Why did Jesus choose him and not all these other people? Because the other people were just gawkers, lookers, curiosity seekers. Hmm, Zacchaeus was eagerly and aggressively searching for God. How come you don't have anything from God? Because you're not eagerly and aggressively searching for God. So he passes up everybody else, like he, God does every Sunday, and goes right to the person hunting for him. Come down here. You're my guy. What's your background? Oh, you should have been stoned. You're a thief. Thieves. No? Thieves go to dinner. Here's a mulberry tree in Israel. Here's an actual tree. That's probably the exact tree he climbed up. I read that on Google. Now, Luke chapter 19. Here we go. He says, make haste. Come on, come down quickly. See, you can tell he's not like Rick. Let's say Rick did get up a tree. He's not coming down fast. It's like the nature videos. Have you ever seen lions? Some of the female lions, they go nuts when something's up a tree, like a leopard's got a goat up there or something. 
And sometimes the lions go nuts because they're so hungry and they'll start climbing the tree. Well, they get up the tree and the leopard runs for his life. But he, and he leaves the goat up there. Now the lion's up the tree. Now the lion's in deep trouble. He can't get out of the tree. But Zacchaeus is like a leopard. Smaller. Nimble. See? The guy was in shape. How was he in shape? Hauling money bags. Denaria to the <laughs> bank. You gotta have some power to haul money bags around. Ask any armored truck driver. Go ahead and ask him. And when they saw, they murmured, uh-oh. You see, anybody who's aggressively hunting for God will always generate murmurers. And they always follow them in their wake like a boat crossing over a pond. You see that little wake behind you? Those are murmurers. They see you going for God like that, and they're, they're jealous, but they're too lazy to, follow, to do what you're doing. They're just too busy gawking and murmuring about you. It happens all the time. Diagonguzo. They grumbled. They're grumblers. Every family has grumblers in it. Oh, look at him. He's dining. He's, he's eating with sinners. He can't be from Jehovah. Well, how do you know that? Well, just read the Bible. Don't you remember Korah? Don't you remember the guy that studied the ark? Oh, they got Jehovah gets mad. I mean, real mad at sin. There's no grace there. You're dead. What are you hanging around Zacchaeus? Are you a thief? He should have his hands cut off. Moses said, cut. cut. Zacchaeus goes to the dinner. He listens to Jesus' teaching. And guess what happens to him? Oh, man. Folks, if you've got any kind of a conscience on you, you are a lottery winner. You are the lucky. You are so fortunate if you've got a conscience. You can't even believe how beautiful it is to have a conscience. You know what a really good conscience is? A conscience is something that actually motivates a person to get their dead fanny out of their chair. That person's really got a conscience. Then if you're going after God, oh, that's a big conscience. People don't have a conscience. Where they're like, Oof. Oh, God. Oh. <sighs> Repent of what? Your conscience is dead. You don't have anything to repent of anymore. Nothing bothers you anymore. If your conscience is working and God's talking to you and you did something wrong and your conscience caught it, you are a lucky person. You are a fortunate person. You are a blessed person. You know why? A conscience will save your soul from an eternity in hell. What happened to Korah? Oh, his conscience wasn't working. He repents. Right in front of everybody. Wow, now that's a... Yep. Back in the 1940s, Billy Graham went to the Baptist Bible School. He was a Southern Baptist. They're big on repentance and salvation. Really good on it. He read that story and he goes, wait a minute here. Yeah. We got to make the people confess their sins. They got to ask God to forgive them. We got to make them do it in public. So he comes up with this idea to have these massive altar calls. And it swept everywhere. Everybody had an altar call. It's a good idea. It's a great idea. Everybody uses it. What are they doing there? He confesses in public. That was impressive. See, in America, Christians don't want to do that. They just want to go off to the side. Listen, I want to talk to you about something. I don't want to do it. She's going to lie on you. She doesn't say that. Brother Mike, I need to talk to you. It's your mic on. Mike, is your mic on. <laughs> My mic's on, but your conscience is off. Not Zacchaeus, man. Oh, man. He was eagerly hunting for God. You know, you can have miracles. You can have your destiny. You can have your healing. You can have your deliverance. If you're eagerly hunting for God. You know what you get when you don't have it? The normal thing. Nothing. Zacchaeus wasn't having that. Uh-uh. 
he was looking for a miracle. He was going to get saved no matter what. And he is taking advantage of this odd change in Jehovah. His personality seemed to have changed. Something happened to him. He must have took a chill pill. I'm going to restore them fourfold, which was the price of stealing a sheep in Exodus 22. And Jesus said, you are now a born-again Christian. What was he doing there? He confessed. Billy Graham caught it. He confessed. He repented. Right? In Billy Graham's crusades, he didn't want to go too heavy into repentance because he didn't want to offend anybody, but he would actually mention that word. He would say repent. He didn't do any good, but I mean, he was a, you know, a decent try. He showed his repentance. See, when repeat people truly repent, you can see it. Their behavior changes. Their vocabulary changes. Their attitude changes. He changed right in front of everybody, and he wasn't ashamed to do it in public. That's how you knew it was real. See, if I do it in private, I can always sneak out the back and start sinning again. Okay, well, let's pray about it. Amen. Poop, out the door. They're going to masturbate again. Question about it. It's not going to work. You come up here with that? You know, I got a bad problem with masturbation, brother. Listen, you got to talk to Rick. <laughs> I don't do that kind of heavy-duty sin up here. <laughs> that person coming out publicly because his conscience is pushing him to a miracle from God, that person you can be sure is going to get healed and saved. That person you can trust long-term. Right. Not this person. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. It's a little too deep for these people. I'll tell you what, the Son of Man came to seek and to save. Same Greek word. Oh, don't you see it? You got Hussein Bolt and Carl Lewis running toward one another and everybody else just watching. Jesus said, I am eagerly and aggressively seeking sick people. Zacchaeus said, I'm eagerly and aggressively looking to be healed. Boom! You get a miracle every time. 100% of the time, you get a miracle. God running at you. You running at God. How do you not get a miracle? Spectator it. Whoa, that's a nice race. Yeah. Oh, oh maybe somebody can help me. Hey, can you talk to me for a minute? Oh, yeah, you'll get healed. That's great. Keep going with that. Don't you see this? Don't you see the attitude and the behavior? Can't you see the motivation and the behavior? Of course you can. People's motivation is reflected in their attitude and in their behavior. Duh! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I came to seek people who are up to me are in the process of being destroyed. And if you're living in sin, you are in the process of being destroyed. You will be ruined forever. There'll be nobody there to save you. Apollomy to be ruined, destroyed. Oh, homeless and mentally ill people. Oh gosh, these people. They got excommunicated. Matthew 8. When Jesus came to the other side of the country, to the Gergesenes, there met him somebody possessed with devils. And they came out of the tombs. They were exceedingly fierce. Calipus. They're dangerous. Hey, no kidding. Some patients with borderline personality disorder, Paranoid schizophrenia. These people sometimes go get guns and they go into movie theaters and sometimes they go into schools and you find 10, 15, 20 people dead. Some of these people are dangerous. Yeah, there's some dangerous demons out there. There's murder spirits sweeping through our society right now. Murder demons. They love killing people. It makes them feel good. These guys were right there. Paranoid schizophrenia, borderline personality. Now here's something interesting. 
These two maniacs were actually here in Gergesa. Notice that in Mark 5, they were down here, the maniac of Gadara, two different places, similar stories. And these kind of people here were people that I've worked with a few times. This was a ministry I worked with out in Los Angeles called the Jonah Project. You've never heard of it. But this guy here, uh, I had prayed for him a year or so before he started that ministry. He got and delivered. And he started this homeless ministry. It was going great. But the, the problem was he was doing things a little shady. Not real shady. You know, the city of Los Angeles requires you to meet certain building codes. If you're going to use a building for public use. And, you know, there's other things considered in the city of Los Angeles. They have sanitation requirements and different. Rick no, Rick does construction. He could list the whole thing out for you. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff you've got to meet, building codes and different sanit and stuff like that. It has to be done before I can start putting a bunch of people in to a facility, right? Yeah, I was in this room right here when we, when we first bought this building. And Kelly was here. Rick was here. Two other people were here. Three others. Well, anyway, a big discussion popped up. Are we going to put the seats like this, or are we going to put the seats starting there back? Now you know that this ministry is run by Rhodes Scholars. I, I know what you're thinking. This is like, dang, these people are some bright suckers here. Oh, yeah, and we went into a long debate over it. Shall we have this and that? And I'm just listening to everybody's opinion. Everybody's getting all worked up, and this, they're saying this and that. And I'm just sitting here thinking because I don't know what to do. Well, one of the things that came up was a zoning. You can only have, there are certain requirements for, you can only have so many chairs for so many parking lots, for so much this, so many baths, so many halls. Every, there's all these regulations with the city that I don't know anything about. I don't care much about. <laughs> well, I said, hey, we got to do what's right because I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to cheat and pull a stunt and get caught in trouble. I don't want to do that. Thank you for your applause. <laughs> well, my buddy here, I'm not going to mention his name didn't see it like I saw it. So he's, he's putting homeless people in this building down there, and they're feeding people. They got a food kitchen. They got people are staying there, residential, and he doesn't have the proper permits, uh, licenses, codes, whatever the city of L.A. requires, a bunch of technical crap. And he ran the thing for like a year or so. I went down there and had a deliverance service, and then I had a bunch of, private counseling services, and it went pretty good. Uh, not great, but good. And a year or so later, before I could come back for another service, he got caught. And just shut the whole, the city came in and locked it right up. There was, there was bed bugs. There was problems with too many people per room, too many beds per room. Too, they had all kinds of restrictions, and he was violating them. Oh, he was just trying to help people. Well, he wasn't doing it because he was a rotten person. He was doing it because he cared about the people and they didn't have the money to make everything just perfect. So he went ahead and did it anyway. He was trying. I mean, the guy had a good heart. But his conscience, he, had, he, he was a recovering drug addict and he hadn't finished his deliverance and his conscience wasn't speaking to him saying, hey, Wait a minute here. It was God going to have me set up a ministry if I have to cheat my way through it, if that makes any sense. So that's a good question to have if you have to cheat your way through something. Uh, that may be a red flag. You want to avoid it. That's an example of a conscience not working. There's more homeless people right down near his mission in L.A. there 
they, they now have more uh, homeless people down there than ever. The, the total is now over 60,000 people. Homeless, 60,000. How many people live in, in Gilbert? How many people live in Gilbert? Gilbert. 85,000. Can you imagine that? A city almost as big as Gilbert is homeless in downtown Los Angeles. An inconceivable. And uh, these spirits start panicking and they start yelling at Jesus, what are, you, what are you doing here? What's going on here? Where's the old Jehovah? What are you doing here? Why don't you, you going to kill this guy? No, I'm not going to kill him now. Things have changed. Things have changed for sinful, mentally ill people. Things have completely changed. Have you come here to torment us, torment us before, uh, Kairos? Yes. Listen to me carefully. Christian, you only have a certain season to change your life and serve God. And that season is coming to an end. That's right. And when that season's over, you will not get a second season. Yeah. Kairos means seasons. Seasons means temporary periods of time. There are with the exception of Arizona, four seasons. Correct? Two seasons here, but everybody else has four. Right? Your Christian life has a season. You only have one season. And when that season's over, you're finished. And you will never get it back. Ever. You never get it back. Demons have a season, and they don't act like Christians do. They're hard workers. They don't sit there and loaf. They're aggressive fighters. They're like Zacchaeus. They're pushing it. Why? Because they know their season is coming to an end. And that's exactly what he asks God. You mean to tell me that our season's up? I thought it was later. What are you talking about? These demons turned into born-again Christians in America. I thought I had a permanent season. I thought my season went on forever. Are you kidding me? Now it's over? Holy shit, I had a heart attack. Oh, I got, I've got a stroke. Oh, my God, I'm old. Oh, my goodness, I, I'm sick now. What well, well, about my season? What? Hey, you got one season, sir. Honey, you got one season. And your season's running out. And you will not get a second season. You only get one. Demons only get one season, and they know it. And they were panicking because they thought their season was up because God was standing there. No, your season's not up. He said, no, it isn't. Oh, what do you do here? You're, gonna get, you're, you're furious, right? The, I've been inf infected this guy and I'm causing him to sin like crazy all the time. You're going to kill him, right? Open the earth and the, the, the earth and hell move? What's got? No. No. No, things have changed. Things have changed. A bunch of pigs are way over yonder. And they said, well, we, we'll leave. Can we go into pigs? I don't understand that completely and there's a lot of different theories on it, but it's kind of clear from just that statement that going into pigs beat going someplace else. Now that someplace else has to be a pretty bad place if you like pigs over that. If you like pigs over that, you've never been around pigs. Uh huh. You don't know anything about pigs. Let me tell you a little bit about pigs. I know a little bit about pigs. My Distant cousins in Springfield, Illinois are pig farmers. Pig farmers. They eat pork all the time there, and they've all got massive arthritis. They walk like zombies. He said, hey, Mike, I got a new uh, pig facility. You want to see it? And I said, oh, absolutely. Of course I want to see it. I know anything about pigs. I thought it was, you know, like going to a zoo. I've been in the zoo. 
I like this thing. He takes me out to 70 acres away. They, they owned half the planet, it looked like. I'm way over there. I go into this big, beautiful, new aluminum building. We walk up to the thing, and he says, here, you might want to take one of these. What's this rag for? Well, just you might want to put it over your mouth. Sometimes the smells a little bit. Are you putting one on? No, I'm fine. Oh, well, I'm fine. I put it in time. You're not putting one on? I'm fine. You're like, what do I look like, a punk? <laughs> well, you think I can't handle pigs and you can't? Uh, what do I, I look like a pig punk to you? Okay. You open the door, boy. Come on, boy. Come on, sucker. Open the door. You sack of pork. Open that door. Well, he opened the door. I saw the face of God. <laughs> on my hand on my mother's grave. I swear it. That was the most horrible smell I have ever smelled. In my 60-something years, none of your business years on this earth. <laughs> I could not believe it. He opened that door and it hit me. It hit me. Oh. I thought Beals above jumped me. <laughs> it was it wasn't a regular smell. Oh no, it's far from regular. Uh uh. No, it wasn't a it wasn't a feces smell. You have you ever smelled feces? Everybody has, haven't you? I mean you 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 went to Roller Bertos one day and you came home and something ain't working right and you looked around and oh my lord, that's that was bad. That was a bowl of perfume compared to what I walked into into that new pig building. It was a new building. Thank God it was new. I'd hate to walk into an old one. And it hit me. And I gasped. And I'm fumbling for the rag. Let me tell you something. If you like pigs over going some other place, the other place, that's a pretty bad place. Let me tell you something, Saint. You only got one season, and your season's running out. So you were 20 years old just yesterday. Now you're in your 40s. Okay, your time is running out. You're not going to be around much longer. You got one season. You don't have two. You better take advantage of this, your last season. Better do it now. And Jesus said, oh, you like pigs better than facing the judgment of God, do you? Of course you do. Jesus knew why they wanted to stay there. He says, go ahead and go. As long as you leave this person, because I'm healing this guy today. Oh, you're not killing him? No. Some, Jehovah has changed, folks. Something's changing here. I'm seeing a different attitude on God's part in these scriptures. I really am. They all ran out and jumped into the sea. Look, it's right here. See? This farm must have been somewhere near here, and they amongst them went down the slopes there and crashed into the Sea of Galilee. Right? That's the near as I can figure Oh boy, whores or something. Oh God, you got stoned. Whores, Jehovah and whores, oh, they're not going to get along. No, 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 no. That infuriated Jehovah. They got stoned. That, oh, this gal's in deep trouble. One of the Pharisees said, Hey, Jesus, would you come over to my house to eat? And there was a woman in the city who was a sinner. And no kidding. When she knew that he was uh, sitting at meat at the Pharisee's house, uh, what does sit, sat at meat mean? Anakimai. Yeah, they, they all laid down. Nobody sat and ate like this, like we do. This is how I sit at Taco Bell. No. Back there, everyone was laying at Taco Bell. And the food was in the center of the room, and everybody laid around the bowls and the little tables. And that's how they ate. Everybody reclined when they ate because everybody walked everywhere and they were pooped. So they took meals, and that was also a time of fellowship and rest and relaxation. It was perfectly normal. This woman brings in a labastron. What is that? Oh, that's good. Well, prostitutes. Uh, obviously, are like any other profession. 
I don't know this from experience. I know it from interviews. They, there's tears of whores. Correct? Don't answer these questions. <laughs> no. Hold your ego on these. So you got your street whore here, and oral sex is easy. You know, let's say you're running about 20 bucks, 25 bucks here. Then you go up the ladder, so on, to an escort here. And then there's different levels of escorts. And again, I've only read this. And these escorts here are very expensive. Correct? And th these, these are not like these, where you meet them out on Grand Avenue. These are scheduled. These are at the penthouse, etc. Well, she was one of these up in this area here. She was a, a higher class whore, so to speak. How do we know that? Because she had these, Alabastron was a very expensive product. And the perfume that they put in these boxes, these boxes cost a lot of money. And the perfume also cost a lot of money. So you, you could, she could tell she wasn't a, an impoverished whore. I mean, there's a possibility she was, and maybe she stole it. But it, to me, it just doesn't make any sense. And they would also use this, this alabastron for other things, too. Faces and pottery, jewelry, different things. It was very expensive, and it was imported from Egypt. Okay? And it was very soft stone, easy to carve, very expensive. Luxurious is the way they saw it, luxurious. And she stood at his feet behind him. Weeping, that was poorly translated. Clio means to wail. Wailing is different than weeping. Weeping is more of a quiet, introverted, semi-silent thing. Sniffling, weeping. Clio is wailing out loud, <coughs> crying out loud so everybody can hear you. A disastrous type cry, right? Well, this is occurring, as you know, in the middle of a dinner. While all the disciples are there and all the Pharisees are there, and they're all laying around, except the servants are there. And then she comes in there. She goes up behind him here and stands behind his feet or here. He's laying that way. Right? That's what it says. She comes behind him at his feet, and she's not going over there quietly with proper etiquette. She's wailing. For God's mercy. See, she's not like an American Christian. Could I be saved, please? Oh, I can't. Okay, I'll go home. No, some people who are desperate for God, they don't just casually take no for an answer and then leave. See, Zacchaeus wasn't about to take a no for an answer. He was going to push his way in. Zateo, he was eagerly and aggressively hunting for God. This woman made Zacchaeus look weak. She walks into a den of lions. Everybody there looked at her like she was a piece of garbage. Whores were at the bottom of their society, and she walks right over to the guests of honor. I'll tell you, that took some guts. They invited him. He's the guest of honor. She goes right over to him. Oh, and, and she's not even acting properly at the formal dinner. Oh, no. She's wailing. Okay, So everybody in the room is feeling very uncomfortable with her. She's a whore. Nobody likes that. She's wailing and begging God for a miracle. No, Christians don't like that. They don't like other Christians pressing into God. It makes them feel uncomfortable. Christians who press into God make the grumblers feel uncomfortable because they're not going to press into God. They're standing back, collating, wondering, hmm, let me think about the proper way to approach the Almighty. Let me... Let me collate and foster that in my mind for a moment. Hum. Let me. Those people never get mir miracles. Those losers go home with nothing every time the church door is shut down. They just waddle out to the parking lot with nothing from God. And that's an absolute fact. That happens all over Phoenix every Sunday morning. Not these kind of people. No, no, no. No, 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 no. 
People are desperate from God and they want miracles from God. They'll push their way in and they're not, they don't worry about your social mores. They're not too interested in your social tradition. Christians are though. Oh, how should I act here? How should I walk here? What should I wear here? What do we wear at church? Oh, we wear these ties. Oh, that's nice. People are desperate for a miracle. They don't, they don't care what you're wearing. They don't care what the seats look like. They don't care what the audio is. Not interested. Not interested. They're interested in a miracle. That's all they care about. That's it. There it is. And she starts washing his feet with her tears. Morbid embarrassment. You don't do that. That's totally out of order. That's massively inappropriate. The servants washed the guests' feet when they first came in at the door. That was a tradition. You wash your feet at the door. You don't let somebody walk through your house without their feet washed. You honor the guests at the door. They take off their sandals. You, as a host, properly wash their feet. Proper etiquette. Normal hospitality, just being a good person. No problem. Not this woman. She comes in uninvited. Oh, God. You know what? People that are really want a miracle from God are always uninvited by Satan. They're always uninvited to the party. They're never wanted there. The problem is the devil can't stop them. So he's only got a certain amount of power. And if you determine through your free will to get a miracle, God, he can't stop you. She shows up uninvited. She just butts her way in. She hunts him down. There he is. She heads over there crying and wailing. As soon as she lays her eyes on him, she sees him as he's a miracle from God. Why? She knows what I know tonight. Something had changed with Jehovah. He wasn't acting the same way he did in the Old Testament because she would have been taken out and stoned. This person laying there wasn't getting up saying, Abomination! Stoner! Oh no, totally different attitude. Something odd's going on. She kisses his feet. Oh, that's totally inappropriate. Oh, God. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. The only time in America, here, we are allowed to kiss feet in public is if it's a baby. Have you ever done that? You ever done that? No, just me? Nobody else had kids? I had kids. I grabbed my daughter's feet. My daughter, Tracy's watching. I used to grab her feet. Hello! Then I'd make some very mature Intellectual type faces. Hello, little girl. Boo, 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 boo. Abu, Abu. Road scholar. Road scholar. Oh, genius. Look at the jealous fools. Look at them all. You don't go up in public and kiss. You got to be kidding me. Awkward. And then she breaks out, moron, that stuff was expensive. So here's where, I, in my mind, she's up here, not down here, on the ladder of whores. You didn't know there was a ladder, did you? Yeah. You wouldn't believe the stuff you learned coming here. No one believes it. She's up here because she's got an alabaster box. That costs a lot of money. And moron costs a lot of money. So that, that was used for higher paying guests. Okay, the Van Buren gals, 20 bucks for oral sex. There's no alabaster box of fancy perfumes or parades out on Grant. Don't, don't say anything, please. I don't want anybody to know that you know what I'm talking about. But this part up here, this is cash money. So this gal is a high class whore, and in fact, the awkward level jumped up 15 or 16 octaves. When some of her clients were there, one of them probably Simon the Pharisee, who invited Jesus to dinner. So that's awkward. So when the Pharisees 
had asked him to come, they started to speak to themselves. And they said to themselves, if this guy was a prophet, translation, he's not one, because he doesn't know who is touching him. This, this whore is not only touching him, she's rubbing his feet, kissing his feet, and weeping on them, and cleaning them off with her hair. Wow, this is embarrassing. She's a sinner. Jesus heard as God hears you every day. You don't say it out loud. He still hears you. The Holy Ghost hears what you're thinking. He sees your intentions, Hebrew 4, and he knows what you're thinking and what you're intending to do. And Jesus says to him, hey, I want to ask you a question. He says, teacher, go ahead, ask me. He says, hey, there was two guys that were owing money. And one of them owed 500 denarian. The other one owed him 50. He forgave both of them. Which one of those uh, agapao showed more love? Which one of those two would he have showed more love to? Agapao, that's the Greek verb for love. Showing love. Which, which of the two would have showed more love to the... And he says, well, probably... He says, the guy who was forgiven more. Those are denarian. Yeah, they had, you know, Roman stuff stamped on them. Simon said, I suppose the one who was forgiven the most. And Jesus said, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Oh, can't you, can't you see that? Can't, can't you see that? You say, you say to yourself, well, I was... a." This person sinned at this level, but I sinned at this level, Mike. I'm the worst sinner there is. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, don't you see that God was looking for this person first? And this one second. Why? Because the fir person forgiven more usually shows more love and appreciation for being forgiven. Oh God, don't you understand? Can't you see it? Casual sinners don't make good Christians. He that's forgiven little loves a little. What you want to do is get you some filthy, nasty, rotten sinners. You know, bring in the whores and the drug addict, the pedophile, the homosexual. Bring them in. They're great. Your grandma comes down here. She, what what did she do? She had a couple of cuss words 30 years ago. <laughs> Damn it, I can't believe it. Oh, grandma, what do you do? Grandma's not going to amount to a hill of beans. For... Get somebody in here who's a nasty, filthy sinner. That's the one the Holy Ghost runs over and grabs. That's who he's looking for. Nasty sinners, filthy sinners. Wait a minute, Jehovah used to kill them. Oh, not anymore. Things have changed now. Things have changed. How God deals with whores has completely changed. It shows it right here. I'll show. I'll prove it to you. You see this woman? He rolls over and points at her. They're laying down. She's on her knees probably. He said, hey, when I got here, you didn't even give me the normal customary procedure of a host. You didn't even wash my feet off when I showed up. Why didn't he do that? Well, the other Pharisees were going to hear about this dinner. And he's got a rep. If he looks like he's pouring extra affection on this Yahshua, it looks like he's one of his followers. Well, if, he, if I look like a follower, that puts me on the outs with the Pharisees. So I'm not even going to treat this guy with the decency that I would normally treat a stranger who was a, passing through, a, a normal traveler would get their feet washed. You're not getting that. Holy smoke. This story is so great. I can't even put it into words. The rottenest, stinkingest sinner in the neighborhood was the only person that got saved that day. All of the religious church people went home with nothing. Exactly. <laughs> 
you didn't even wash my feet. A total stranger would come here. A Jewish custom is you would wash their feet. I came here. I am, I am the son of God. I am the rabbi. You called me teacher. You didn't wash my feet. And that's what happens to born again Christians. It's so sad. They're saved for a while, and it's so sick. Isn't it sick? Oh God! Have you ever run into a Christian who's been saved for a long time? Oh God! You make me want to puke. You get a spoon. They've lost their joy. They've, they've gotten reinfected with demons. They went back to a bunch of bad habits. Now they're sinning again. They've lost their first love. They're going through the church motions. God, it's sickening. My God, it's ugly. Somebody desperate from God? Oh, my goodness. The angels were down there that night. I really believe that. A bunch of angels were looking at that whore going, wow, that's amazing. Look at that. Now that, that's how you treat God. The angels were taking notes. My goodness, now that's how that's how I should have treated Jehovah. Michael's going, good Lord, I wish I'd have met that girl. That's how you treat God. Like a whore from the neighborhood. Look at her, she's wiping my feet with her. Yeah. You didn't even give me any anointing oil. My God. You know what she did? She took her profession, her alabaster box, cost a fortune. The moron cost a fortune on top of that. She broke that box. Saying, saying, I am never going to whore myself out ever again. What was she doing like Zacchaeus did? She repented like Zacchaeus did, and she did it in public, not like a Mickey Mouse Christian in America. <laughs> Brother Mike, I'll hear it. Can somebody forgive me right now? Christianity in this country is jacked up. No offense. Oh, this woman here knows how to treat God. Look, she poor. She doesn't even have an alabaster box anymore. She's, she doesn't even have any moron anymore. She sacrificed everything for me. You wouldn't even wash my feet at the door. You were so used to having a rabbi over to yourself. What's the sad point in that story? Christians are so sick. They've been saved so long. They're used to God. As soon as you get used to him, you're screwed. As soon as he becomes common to you, your life's over. Your spiritual life. Oh, I've done that before. Oh, I prayed that before. You reach that spot, boom. You're dead in the water. Not this one. Not Zacchaeus. Uh uh. No, far from it. They were desperate for miracles. Jesus said, listen to this. Here's a Christian principle that you see in operation every single day in every church in America. To whom little is forgiven. Agapao. They show less love. To whom much is forgiven, they show more love. What was he talking about there? A lot of it was basic human nature. They that sat at meat with him began to do what? Uh oh, the grumblers are back. See, as soon as a desperate person comes looking for God, the grumblers follow in the wake as the boat passes through. They got something to say about it, something negative, some critical remark, something you didn't do right. Oh, Brother Mike said this and that. Ministers don't talk like that. Oh, he's wearing that. Look, I can never compete with that. <laughs> the grumblers will always follow somebody hunting for God. I'll guarantee you that. They'll follow them. They won't follow them to help them. That I will guarantee you. <clears throat> What's he think he's doing? Forgiving his sins. He said, This woman is saved. Your faith has sozo delivered you. Go in peace. Jehovah has changed. Oh my goodness. Luke 19. When he came near. He beheld the city, and he was, same Greek word, Jesus. On the night he was arrested, stood on Olivet and looked out there and started to what? Wail like that whore a couple of days before. Not weeping, wailing. Why? The Jerusalem Jews had turned into American Christians. They got used to him. 
God was common to them now. They've been to church and the synagogue all kinds of time. It was just another thing now. They weren't desperate anymore for a miracle from God. Jesus started to wail. As it says in Gone with the Wind, he had a crying jag. If you'd only know your day. Oh my goodness, what a statement. He said the same thing the demons did. Had you only known that this was your season and you only get one of them, you only get one season. And the Jews didn't know. And it crushed him. Was Jesus happy with Simon the Pharisee that day and all the other kooks at lunch? Absolutely not. He left there thrilled with the neighborhood bargain basement whore. Why? She was a God seeker. Followed by a wake of grumblers. What happens when your season's over? Anybody know? Yeah. It's hid from your eyes. You can't get it back. Jesus said to them again in John chapter 20, after he was resurrected, what do you say? Peace to you. As my Father has sent me, I am sending you. John 20, after eight days, his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them, and Jesus came, and the first thing he said was, Acts 10, the word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, Lord of all. The great scripture, Romans 1, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace and peace to you from God the Father and God the Son. What happened here? Oh, it's so easy to see, isn't it? God changed. He's changed. God is not angry at you anymore. Romans chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Why do we have peace with God? It says it right there. Listen. Uh, if you're a felon in the United States, most states do not allow you to vote. Do you know that? I think they're trying to change that. But if you're a felon in the United States, you can't vote. And you say, well, it doesn't make any difference. Most felons don't want to vote. Well, that's true, but there are some felons that would like to vote. But they can't. Each of you was a felon in the eyes of God. You were not only born in sin, you willfully committed sins of your own free will. You were damned to an eternity in hell and judgment from God. You deserved what Korah got. <laughs> but when you received the blood of Christ, you were dikaiao, declared not guilty. So therefore, since you are not guilty and you do not have any felonies anymore, you can now vote. You now have peace with God. Romans 10. How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. She finished washing his feet. He rolled over and said, go in peace. 
Your faith has saved you. There's no reason not to have peace now because you are now justified and declared innocent by God. Romans 15. Peace of God. Romans 16. Now the God of peace shall soon trebo, shatter Satan under your feet shortly. And that would be like five minutes. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Peace and grace. 1 Corinthians 1, 2 Corinthians 1, Galatians 1, Ephesians 1. He starts out all of them with the same verse. Why is he doing that? Peace from God, our Father. God is not angry at human beings anymore. He is not upset at human beings anymore. He is not furious at human beings anymore. Ephesians chapter 2, he is our peace who made us both one, Jews, Gentiles. And broke down the middle wall of partition, separating us from God. So now we have peace through the blood of his cross. And he reconciled everything to God. Translation, come here. Ooh. Jehovah is not mad at you anymore. He's not mad at anybody anymore. No, he didn't send a hurricane. No, he didn't send the earthquake. He didn't send the terrorists and the Twin Towers. No, it never happened. Would it have happened in the Old Testament? Yeah. Yeah, what happened? What happened now? No, 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 no. Somebody paid for you to get your voting rights back. Somebody paid the penalty for you. So now you have peace with God, even when you fail, even when you sin. You didn't hear me, did you? Even when you fail, and even when you sin. You still have peace with God. So you see, there's no reason anymore for you not to be healed. There's no reason anymore. There's no reason for it for you not to be delivered. You have nothing but peace from God right now. You have nothing but peace with God. Nothing. You have nothing but peace with God. Were you a particularly horrible sinner? Uh, were you? Hey, girl, honey, did you sleep with 200 guys? Great. Okay. Were, you, were you a crack addict for 15 years? Oh, beautiful. Were you a drug runner? Oh, were you a human smuggler? Were you, did you murder somebody? Oh, that's great. Good. Yeah, that's okay, fine. Great. God's looking for you first. You know why? Because people that are forgiven much, they show more love. People who are forgiven little show little love. God likes people who show more love. That's what he likes. He's a love peace person let's pray father god thank you lord for jesus thank you that you are not angry at me anymore you are not 
angry at human beings anymore. You are not angry at sinners anymore. We have peace with God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And since we've got peace with God, there is no reason, absolutely none, that any person here in me can't be healed. Any person here tonight can be forgiven, particularly the hardcore sinners. Anybody here tonight can be delivered from demons. Why? Because we have peace with God. You don't give people leprosy anymore. You don't throw people into hell anymore. You don't kill people on the spot anymore. Thank you, Jesus, for mercy. For all the prophets prophesied until John. Since then, the kingdom of heaven is preached. And everybody presses their way into it. Father God, I pray that you'll give my friends a special gift tonight. The gift that that poor sinner woman had. The gift that Brother Zacchaeus had. They had a determined desire to press their way in for a miracle from Jesus. I pray that you will forgive every person in here who doesn't have that desire. I pray you'll have mercy on them. I pray for every person in here right now who's a casual prayer. Every person that prays casually, who has no fight, who has no spiritual warfare skill, I pray for them, Lord, that you will forgive them because you want to equip them. You want to heal them. You want to bless them. You are not angry at them. Your fury and your anger was placed on the cross of Calvary. Jesus is our peace. Jesus broke down the middle wall of partition. Jesus covered it all. And so right now, every person that's condemning themselves or seeing themselves as a failure or a loser or nitpicking themselves, I'm asking you to forgive them and ask you to give them the grace to repent tonight. To repent of those lies. Jesus has made every person listening to my voice 100% worthy through his blood. Every person is worthy. Any person can be healed. Every person can be delivered from demons. Every person can be delivered from child abuse, lust, pornography, self hatred. Every person. Who is a whore can be healed. Every person who is a thief can be forgiven. Every person can. There are no exceptions unless they won't come for help. Well, whoever it is, Lord, I'm asking you to touch them right now so they will come and pray and repent and change because our season is only one. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. There is a time to be born and there's a time to die. And all of us will face that season ending experience someday. We can't waste any more days, weeks, months, or years. It's time to change. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you need prayer, come on up. The ministry team is going to pray for you. Come up here and stand right here. There's about 12 of you who are in deep trouble. Stand right up here. Thank you, Jesus. And when you come up here, when you get here, you're going to change real quickly. You know what you're going to do? You're going to become Zacchaeus when you get up here. You're going to become that sinner woman with the alabaster box. You're going to, you're going to break 
what you find important to you you're gonna give it to the Lord you're just gonna smash it like she did she smashed that box and when she smashed that box she was saying I'm never going back to my old life again that's what she said I'm done with it I'm done with it right sister Yes, you know what you're done with ma'am All them people that verbally abused you and criticized you and said negative things about you mean absolutely nothing father never had a bad word or a bad thought about you ever You're done with that you're done with it. Yeah Yes, sir. You're done with every ugly man ever used you or lied to you or took something from you You're done with it. You're done with it you're done with doubt and unbelief. You're just done with it. You're done like her. Every bad man that ever lied to you and cheated you. You're done with rebellion and sinning, aren't you? You're done with it. It's over. Yeah, you're supposed to be healing people. Your season needs to start, doesn't it? Doesn't he? Yeah. Come on. Are you done with it? Zacchaeus tonight. The gift of Zacchaeus. The gift of the sinner woman. Okay? If you come to God and you mean business, that clicks the Holy Ghost right out of the gate. He just clicks. He sees it right there. Boom. He's the great stuff nobody sees. He knows whether somebody's just casually coming up or he knows when somebody means business like this lady. Right? He knows that. Doesn't he, sir? Come on, close your eyes. Now let's let's pray. Like you mean business. Like you're a sinner, woman. Like you're Zacchaeus. You climbed a tree. You ran down there to get him. Didn't you? You need a miracle night. You're gonna fight for one. The devil's gonna try to steal your miracle from you. That's what he's gonna do. He's trying to talk you out of it. Oh no, that's embarrassing. Don't let Brother Mike near you. That's embarrassing. Oh no, somebody will look at you. No, nobody's looking at you. We turn the lights down. You don't have an excuse here. Nobody can see you on the YouTube because the lights are down. You don't have an excuse of being embarrassed in public. You can't even see somebody over there. You can't even see somebody over there. <clears throat> the lights are down. You can't even see their face over there. That's why I turn the lights down so you're you don't have any public embarrassment. That's why the lights are down. Come on, start praying like that girl. There's a that girl should be in the New Testament. You hear her? She's crying out to God. Look at that girl right there. That's like the girl in the center woman. My goodness. So I wish I had about five thousand of hers in here. I pray and ask God for that. Father, give me five thousand center women here tonight. Give me five thousand whores. Give me 5,000 tax collectors in the name of Jesus. People that will pray with their guts. That's what I want to see. People will pray with their guts. Not praying with their minds. No, no. Praying with their hearts. Not thinkers. Reachers. Come on now. Jesus have mercy on me. Jesus have mercy on me. God have mercy on me. I'm done with it. I'm done with it tonight. I'm done with it. I'm done with him tonight. I'm done with it, I said. I'm done with it, I said. I'm done with it. I said I'm done with it come out. I'm done with this thing come out in Jesus name. I'm done with it I'm done with it. I'm done with carrying around all these yeah. Well, there's more than that. Where was the first pain at the emotional pain? That's when it started. What was that? Yeah, that's the real pain who did it? Who did it? Say it wasn't God's no, fault. I did, did it. it. I did it. It's my fault. Who hurt you? I don't know. My mom and dad, my first one. Male. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what's his first name? Richard. First name. Freddie. First name. Freddie. Freddie. Freddie and Richard. Come on. Raise your hand. Father God, in the name of Jesus, these transfer spirits from Freddie and Richard got into her body, and now they're developing. Illnesses. It's not a come out. It's not the sicknesses. That's the problem. It's the men and the transfers. It's her sin. It's her sin. Come out, spirit. Go. Heal. heal. Ready? Come out. All the men. Come out of there. 
Come out right now, every man. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Every evil spirit hiding in this body, you filthy, unclean spirits, you come out of this woman of God. Stop making her sick and stop the giving her fake ill. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out. There they come. They're coming out now. Perversion. Come out. Evil. Come out of her. Evil, I said. Come out. Demon of pain. Come out. Right now. Evil. Adultery. Fornication. Every ugly man with spirits. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out, I said. Get out. Come out of me right now. Take a breath of love. Hello. Come out, spirit. Come out, spirit, right now. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of me. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. There's nothing wrong with her body. It's demons. Now come out of there. She thinks she's got medical condition. That's a lie. Come out in Jesus' name. Every ugly man, come out. I said, if you see Father, come out. Negative words, come out. Critical words, curse words. Out. Heal. 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 Right now, come out. Get out of there. Go. Satan, lose your hold. Come out now. Come out of there, you pervert. You're done with him. Now you're done. Get out of my body right now. Every ugly man that ever hurt me. I command them all to come out now. The demon of food trying to give me diabetes, high blood pressure, and a heart attack. Come out of my body right now. Spirit, come out. Take a breath of love. Come out of my body right now. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Keep blowing. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Come out of my stomach. Unclean spirit. Come out. There he comes. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Come out of her. Witchcraft. Come out. Come out in Jesus' money. Come out. Come out of her throat. Come out of her throat. Come out. Get out of there. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out quickly. That evil and wickedness. Come out of her. Come out. Come out. Perversion. Come out. Come out. Satan, loose your hole. Satan, I command you to come out. There he comes. You pervert. Go. Come out now. Go. I command evil to come out of you. I command poison to come out. Come out. All of them come out of me now. Every one of them. Out. Come on, sweetie. Fight. Fight harder. Come out. Go. Come out of my spine right now, you witch. Mother Mary. Mother Mary demons, come out. Mother Mary, come out. Pope demons. Catholicism, come out. Oral sex, come out. Demons of fear. Fear, come out. Fear. Go in Jesus' holy name. Go now. Cowardice. Come up. Get out of the stomach right now. Right now. Come out, you pervert. You come out of there right now. Come out right now, I said. Here he comes. Oral sex. Come out of her. Come out of her mouth. Come out. Sexual abuse. Come out. Come out, you pervert. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Get out. You get out of my head right now. I command you to go. I'm not wasting another year. This is it. I've had enough of it. Get out of my body, you spirit of pain. Every spirit of pain, I command you to come out of my body right now. Food demon. Using food as a come. There he comes. Here he comes. Come out. There he is right there. Keep coughing. Hold that. 
Come out right now. Go. Come out. Demon of pain, come out. Food demon, come out. Go. Gluttony, come out. Self hatred, low self esteem. Come out. Body dysmorphia, come out right now. Come out. Spirit of pain, fake illnesses, demon illnesses, come out. Go. Get out of that body. That's one with some oil. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, this gift of healing is stalled. What's the gift of healing in his hands here? Masking you. Masking you. Release it. Heal. Keep blocking spare. Come up. There he is. Come up. Come up. Get out of there. Come out of that body right now. Come out quicker. Demon of pain, I command you to come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Go. Come out. Get out of there. You Every ugly man that ever touched you comes out. All the rotten husbands. Come out. Verbal abuse. Come out. Verbal abuse. Fear. Night terrors. Bad dreams. Go. Witchcraft and sorcery. Come out of her spine. Spine. Spine, come out of her. Come out of her spine. 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 Come out. Spine. Go. Get out. Come out. 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 All the demons from my husband. Out right now. All of them. Get out of there. Come out. Come out. Quickly. Quicker. You pray harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Come out. I said, fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Go. Go in Jesus' name now. Get out of her universe. Come out of her womb right now. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. How'd that go? So good. So good. Yeah, good. We'll, we'll, we'll be here next Saturday. Somebody re recommended us to come in. Come over here. So, uh, brother in Christ recommend recommended us to come over here. So we'll be here. Were you an addict? Yeah, I was an addict. Oh, yeah. what kind of drugs was? I mean, crystal meth. Crystal meth. <laughs> you with her? You, you related to her? This is my wife. That's your wife? Yeah. He's on crystal meth? Yes, I know. He's on crystal meth? Yes. How long have you been married? So am I. You're on crystal meth? I was, yes. You were too? I was, oh, no. yes. I came along tonight. Hey. I'm sorry. I was sitting behind her and the Holy Spirit told me, the Spirit is suicide. Yes, I tried to commit suicide. I'm not saying that, but I went and asked her. I told her I don't work here, but I went and asked her. She said she tried to commit suicide. I'm in the time. Come on. Come on. Now listen, crystal meth demons, they're the worst. They're the worst ones. Rejection. The worst in heroin. Come on here. Come on here. Close your eyes. Take a big breath. Come on, sweetheart. There he is. Come out of there, you monster. There he is. Come out. Come out now. Come out right now. Come out now. Hold her hair for me. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Every spirit from her husband. Go. Come out. Crystal meth. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Suicide. Murder. Go. Murder. Come out. Every demon from her husband. Go. Come out. Come out now. Every ugly man. Every one of them. All of them. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. 
Come out. They all come out tonight. I forgive all of them. I let them go now. I want all their demons out of me now. There they go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come on, honey. You're supposed to live. You're not supposed to die. You're not going to die. Get out of my body. Come out, Satan. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Get out. Go now in Jesus' holy name. I repent. I repent of it. Come out. Self hatred. Self hatred. Suicide. Go. Come out. Right now, go. Go now. Out. Come out. I'm tired of receiving. I'm tired of you. Come out. Yes. Tonight it's over. Come out. Oh, there they come. Go in Jesus' name. There they come. There they come. Glory to God. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Come out, Satan. Loose the woman of God. Loose the woman of God. Come out of her stomach. Come out. Go now. You, you tell them things to come out of you right now. Food demon, come out. Come out now, food demon. Using food as a comfort, I repent of it. Come out, spirit. Right now. Alcohol, go. Sorcery, go. Witchcraft, go. New age, go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Evil. Evil. Here he comes. There he comes. There he comes. There he comes. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Come on, the Holy Ghost is running amok tonight. Step in. Step in. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is here. Step in and get it. Go get it. Step in. Come on. Come out of me in Jesus. Come out of there. Stupid damn devil. Get out of that body. Get out of me. I want peace. I want peace. Come out. Are no, you telling him to come out? Tell him to get, come out. Get out of here. Get out of my body. Get out of here, demon. Say it. Get out of here, demon. I don't want get out of my body. Get out of my body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Okay, Christ. take a breath and blow. Blow. Come out, spirit. Get out, spirit. Come out. Keep blowing. Keep blowing. Come out. Keep blowing. Come out. Come out. And a girl. Satan. Satan, come out of my wife right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of my wife. Come out of my wife. Get out of my wife. I command that soul tie to be broken right now. The soul tie to that boy that travels through the gates of hell. Pulling you through the gates of the fires of hell. We command that soul tie to break. The fire of hell through that guy. Break. Off the man of God. Break. Did you used to be a Catholic? Were your parents Catholics? My mom. Your mother was? Okay, raise your hand. Mother Mary, come out right now. Come out. Come out. Pope demons. Mother Mary spirits. I command you in Jesus' mighty name. The sacrament. Here he comes. Here she comes. There she is. Mother Mary, go. Sacraments, go. Eucharist, go. Come out. Come out. Lesbians, go. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Get out quickly. Come out of there. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you lesbian. Go. Come out. Come out there. Get out of that body right now. Come out now. Get out of that body right now. Every religious spirit, every church demon, 
Come out of me. Come out of me now. Alcohol. Adultery. Come out of me. Come out. Adultery and oral sex. I command you. Come out. Come out. There he comes. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of there, you pervert. Go. Get out of that body right now. Come out of her throat. Come out of her throat quickly. Stop stalling. You childhood monster of sexual abuse. Come out. Get out of her stomach. Come out of her stomach. Heart attack. Come out. Diabetes. Go. Spirit of infirmity. Come out of that body. Sickness and disease. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Sickness. Disease. Go. Go. Get out right now. Keep coughing. Come out. Get out. Every spirit from my dad. Leave me now. Every spirit from my dad. Come out. There he is. Here he comes. That's him. Come out. Come out of that body right now. Come out right now. Get out of my body. No, keep coughing. No, no. Keep going. Yeah, go. Go. Come out of me. My dad's demons go. My dad's demons go. Heal, Holy Spirit. Heal. Come out of body right now. Out. Out. Out faster. Faster. Faster, you rotten demon. Go in Jesus' name. Hurry up. Get out of there. Hurry up. Come out. Come out. Get out of her kidneys right now. Get out of her kidneys. Come out of her liver right now. Come out of her liver. Come out of there. Come out. Go. Loneliness. Come out right now. Self hatred. Go. Self hatred. Hating my own body. Go. Hating my body. Go. Come out. Unworthiness. Come out. Go. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Get out quicker. Come out now. Get out of there. Come out. You're not done. Come out right now. Hurry up. Get out. Come out. Get out of there. Come out quicker. Get out of the man of God. Come out quicker. Come out of there, you psycho. Come out of that body right now. Go. Quick. Come out. Go. Come out. Get out of that body quicker. Safe and lose your hold. Safe and lose your hold. Go, I said. Come out, I said. You get out of this woman of God. You release her gift of healing right now. Do it now. Come out of there. I bind every prayer tunnel demon. Every fire tunnel. Every church spirit. Come out right now. Every prophetic demon. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Get out of that back right now. Come out there right now. Come out quickly. Quicker. Quick. Come out of his mind. Come out. Kundalini. Go. Come out of there, you witch. Sorcery. Witches. Sorcerers. Witchcraft. Come out, witchcraft. Get out of that body right now. New age. Go. New age. Go. Go. Right now. Come out quicker. You're stalling. You're stalling. Come out of that body. Come out of there, you monster. Discouragement. Discouragement and exhaustion. Weariness. Come out. Get out of that body quicker. Come out now. 
Come out of her nose. Come out of her face right now. Come out of there. You come out of her womb. Every ugly man that touched her comes out tonight. Every one of them. Every ounce of adultery from teenage till now. Go. Every transfer spirit from bad men. Go. Come out. Every transfer. Every transfer. Go. Every bad man. Every old boyfriend. Every bad man. All of them. Every one of them go. Every one of them come out. Come out. Food demons, I bind your power. Food demon, I bind you. Gluttony. Food. Lust. I bind your power. Come out. Go in Jesus' holy name. Thus saith the Lord, go. Get out of there. Come out quicker. Get out of there quicker. Right now, get out of me. Satan, right now, get out of me. Hurry up. Come out quicker. Quicker. Hurry up and come out now. You stinking spirit, I hate your guts. Come out of me right now. The demon of sin, come out. The demon of religion. Bible study demons, come out. Bible study demons, come out. Hurry up. Arrogance and pride, go. Bible study pride, go. Bible study pride, go. Study, pride, go. Come out. Pray harder. Come out. Pray harder. Fight harder. Come on, sweetie. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Get out of there. Come on now. Fight harder. Fight harder. YouTubers. You got to open up a terror cell in your church and start one of these services at your home group. You start your home group like this, two or three, and then you start picking off the sick people at your church, and you bring them to your home group, and you start commanding Satan to let his filthy hands off of your people. Satan, come out. Come out now. Go! Go now! Come out of me now! Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go to the website and hit the teaching button and start your discipleship program. We will have a deliverance and teaching service here next Thursday at 7 p.m. Next Friday at 7 p.m. I will see you then.